I declare to you good news of great joy, which shall come to all people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. On my own behalf, I welcome all of you to this our first liturgy of the Nativity of Christ. Uh, you will all receive a printed copy of the hymn of the day that is sung after the sermon from heaven above, because I simply couldn't follow the way it was printed in our hymnal. Maybe it would come easier to you than it did to me, but uh, we printed it out so that uh, the words are clear and you, you, you don't have to run your finger up and down the paper to, to know where we're at. If you don't believe me, just check it out in the hymnal. So, with that, um, our confession and forgiveness comes later in the service today, so we'll begin with our rites of preparation and entrance, all to our able to stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, so that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our gathering image number 279, O little town of Bethlehem, uh, we will sing the first two stanzas, and then I will bless our crash here in the front, and then we will sing to the last two stanzas.
Almighty God, who made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light, grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence, and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson for this evening is recorded in the book of Isaiah, the ninth chapter. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressors, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulder, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord.
second reading is recorded in the book of Titus. Paul writes, The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own, who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord.
Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied to all of you on this night from God our Father and our newborn King and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. In Christ our blessed Lord and Savior, my dear sisters and brothers. Year by year, we hear this story from the inspired pen of St. Luke. A story to some, perhaps, too familiar, and therefore not really heard. It has lost none of its simple charm, but there is something much more here than a charming and simple story. It is a story with great depth and meaning that goes far deeper than the mere telling of events that occurred during the reign of Emperor Augustus. For the event that is being described is one of world-shattering significance because it is a world-saving event. The birth of the one who is the Savior, Christ the Lord, is the inauguration of the salvation of the whole world. But not at all in the way we might expect. Not at all in the way that we would have arranged it. We must pay attention to the way in which the story is told if we would begin to grasp the depth of what God was doing in the life of the world on that silent, holy night. The shepherds were told to look for a child tightly bound in bands of cloth lying in a manger. The manger is mentioned three times in these 20 verses of Luke chapter 2. We are told Mary laid the child in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. The angel told the shepherds that this would serve as a sign for them, a child lying in a manger. And finally, when the shepherds hastened to Bethlehem, they found Mary and Joseph, and they found the child lying in a manger. A manger is usually found in a stable, which we usually find pictured, much as our uh, press here tonight, we find it pictured as a wooden shed or barn, because that's the type of stable that we would be most familiar with. Though in reality, it may have been a limestone cave where animals St. Luke makes no mention of which animals were there. We are accustomed to seeing an ox and a donkey in pictures and nativity scenes. This idea actually comes from Hebrew scripture where we read in Isaiah 1 verse 3, the ox knows its owner and the donkey its master's crib, but Israel, my people, does not know me, 
sight is no longer. In the same way, God's nation, Israel, does not know or recognize the child lying in a manger. But there are some few who do come to that manger bed and do recognize him. And who are they? Are they the scholars and the rabbis? The priests from the temple? The rich, the high, and the mighty? No. Not to such was the Savior first revealed, but to shepherds from the fields. They come as humble representatives of the believing people of God. They hasten from the fields to nearby Bethlehem, the town of David, who was himself a shepherd before he became the great warrior king of Israel. The shepherds came seeing and recognizing there in the manger the Savior, Christ the Lord, who will one day say, I am the good shepherd. You will find him in a manger and there you will know and recognize him as the Savior, Israel's Messiah, the Lord. My sisters and brothers, we today can still find him in the manger. Not by traveling literally to Bethlehem, where even today they will point out to you the supposed actual site of Jesus birth. Although I understand that visitors there to, from abroad have pretty much been banned this year because of the conditions existing there. But they will point out to you that exact site where today stands the ancient church of the Nativity and beneath it a limestone grotto with the chapel of the Holy Manger. But my brothers and sisters, we may know tonight that Jesus is just as much here as he is there or any place else on earth. The Bible, both Old and New Testament, is the manger in which we find Christ. There we find the child of Bethlehem who became the Christ of Calvary, who lived and suffered, died and rose again. The manger in which we find Christ is the baptismal font in which young and old alike are reborn as children in the family of God and heirs of heaven's kingdom. The manger in which we find Christ is the sacrament of Holy Communion. After all, what is a manger for? It's for feeding. And there Christ gives himself to us as the bread of heaven to give sustenance to our hungry souls. The very name Bethlehem means house of bread, the altar from which we are fed is Bethlehem. The manger in which we find Christ is wherever he meets us today, in the rough places of our lives. Also among the poor, the hungry, the homeless, the lonely, the abused, the sick and the sorrowing, the disabled, the distressed, and the despairing. And we don't have to go very far to find them. Like the shepherds, we must go. 
not to a place on the map called Bethlehem. We must go to the scriptures, go to where the living word is preached and heard, go to where the living waters flow freely, go to where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is prepared, and then go forth to those who need us. And there, too, we shall find Christ.
using the words of the Nicene Creed as printed in your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In joy and wonder, we pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. <clears throat> Loving and merciful Father, we come before you with happy hearts as we plan a day of celebration, celebrating the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, Son of the Most High God. We are so thankful that he was willing to leave his place in the heavens, coming down to earth so that he could provide a way for us to be made right with you. Keep us ever mindful of the sacrifice Jesus made for each one of us. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> Father, you have shown us through the scriptures the response you would desire from us as you lead us through our lives. Open our hearts and minds and help us to respond to the outpouring of your amazing love. Wrap us up tightly in that love and never turn away from us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father, Give us hearts that are more like Mary's heart, open and accepting, willing to do as you ask. May we be excited to show others how gracious and merciful you are. Help us to trust that you will indeed be with us as we journey through life. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father, help us to listen to the messages you send, just as Joseph was able to listen believe, and then act on what he was told by the angels. Help us to believe that with you, we will be safe in your care, even if the journey is long and dangerous. Help us never to doubt that you are in control and that with you, nothing is impossible. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father, we know that Though the innkeeper did not have room in the inn for Mary and Joseph when they were in need, he nevertheless offered what he had, a stable. Help us to recognize that even when we do not have all that may be needed, if we offer what we have, you will make it right for the need of others. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father, teach us to listen for messages the angels sing as they did the night of our Savior's birth when they appeared to the shepherds. May we be as excited as those shepherds as they left all to come and see this child of whom the angels sang. May we go forth from this time of worship wanting to tell the world what is about to happen. May our hearts be bursting with joy and anticipation. Lord, in your mercy. Father, the wise men of old, following the brightly shining star, traveled great distances 
to find the long-awaited Christ child. They brought with them gifts, gifts that were inspired by you, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The gold, a gift for royalty. The frankincense, a gift for deity. And the myrrh, a spice used to anoint a body for burial. All gifts that were symbols of Christ's identity. May the gifts we bring help to further the spread of the story that begins with the birth of our Savior. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Blessed Lord and Savior, we bring before you those of our congregation who for whatever reason could not be with us tonight. Wrap your loving arms around them. Also, we bring to you those suffering, whether it be in body, mind, or spirit. Keep them ever in your loving care. We remember especially those whom we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Ken and Felicia, Cal, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Blessed Savior, because of your coming, your life, your death, and your resurrection, we can have our eternal life with you in a place where there is no sadness or pain but instead a life eternal in your heavenly kingdom to live with all the saints who have gone before us, a place where we will see you face to face. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray also for forgiveness of our sins. All who are able may kneel, and we will also pause in a moment of silence.
Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. With them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to you. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it for the remembrance. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Glory to you, Lord God, heavenly King. In this holy child, all lives are renewed and all sins forgiven by his life and holy passion. 
his resurrection and exaltation at your right hand. Let your spirit be upon us that as we partake of this holy mystery, we may be filled with your forgiving love and the promise of new life through this holy child. Join our prayers with those of Mary and Joseph and all your saints and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as the glorious Lord of all. <laughs>
Father, you are the fount and source of all goodness. In loving kindness, you sent your only begotten Son into the flesh. We thank you that for his sake, you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Oh, my 